What's going on guys, JSGC Football here and we're here for another video. Today we're going to be doing another video where we're going to have Mick Sid on and he's going to be giving me some of the thoughts, including um, the thoughts about Ryan Lowe and what's happening at Preston North End, which I know is a very uh, much a topic for discussion for people to enjoy and really get their teeth into uh, and give their thoughts. So firstly, before I even crack on with the video, Ryan Lowe, should he leave? Should he be out? Let me know in the comments below. Simply put yes if you think he should leave right now or put no in the comments if you think that he should be given a little bit more time at Preston North End. And do feel free to give your reason and give your reason why you think he should stay or go. Do get that in the comments below. So it's another episode. We've run a few of these before where we we'll just have a general uh, topic of conversation and we we'll just have a basically just chatting shit. So I'm calling this uh, series Chat Shit get paid i think it's like episode number three so mix it let's bring him in to the studio and let's hello. get some of his thoughts hello aaron ryan low <laughs> what's happening what's happening what's happening let me know ryan low what's your thoughts he's not helped himself this week because for me that's a deciding point when he started calling the north end fans saying they're unqualified to comment on preston game for me, when you start uh, calling the fans, it's the beginning of the end for you. Because mm. you can see he's yeah. under pressure. You can tell from the body language it's low. And he's just running on empty at the minute, North End. Because the, the confidence just looks really low throughout the team, because especially around low as well. So it's very telling. As you can tell in the interviews, he seems very down, downcast. And I don't think they have much idea how to change this around. Because they're going through a very bad run of form. Because they're three wins in our last 16. As our, uh, we're not one at Deepdale since October the 4th. That, so that is where the real problem is coming from. It is our home home form. Ever since West Brom sussed us out and smashed us, we have not been right since that day. So say on the table, yeah. so say we're still in the top half. You couldn't moan about it. I'm just having a look at your form here. Um, it's got off to a pretty good start through August. Oh, yeah. Wins, we're in there. Wins, wins, wins against there. Sunderland away at Wednesday. Six wins out of seven there. One draw, 19 yeah. points. I think it's just this little period. Rotherham away when we went. Maybe we're the jinx. <laughs> Loss at home against West Brom. Away losses back to back. Three losses in a row. No wins in, in four games, I think that is. Yeah. Uh, no wins in five. No wins in six. This is seven. the pivot. Pull, pull it back to Southampton for me. Yeah. This is where it starts it's, going it's very gone. wrong. You know, it's a pattern with North yeah. End that we keep conceding in added time. We did against Southampton 96 minute, and we've not been right since that day. Mm, yeah. And so it does question, like, the Preston, is the fitness there? Is that is a big question of the club, especially of the players? Are they fit enough? As we keep conceding late goals after late goals, and it's a recurring it just... pattern, especially in the Ryan Lowe tenor as well, especially the amount of goals we can see. When we lose, we lose. I mean... It's a disappointing October. No wins in October. Yeah. That's poor. And you really should have beaten Southampton. You really should have beaten them. I should have held but on, yeah. You follow it up with a couple of really good wins. Home against Coventry, away against Blackburn. A couple of really good wins. Hey, it's a poor return the point, break. Though. And, you and just... then again, this, this 10 yeah. man, like, they can count unlucky, so we just fell to bits. I mean... Home and against that. Cardiff. Home Keep against God. Queen's Park Rangers. Hammered. And a good draw Absolutely against Norwich. Hammered at home <laughs> against Watford. It's, it's yeah, there's just there's little spells. Two 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 games here, two games there, you yeah. get some good results, pick up four and six points. So it it just stops you from dropping into the eighteenth, nineteenth place in the table. Uh, but the the longer this goes on, uh, you you fancy that sooner rather than later, you you you're really going to start to you're going to start drop. to dip uh, and drop down that uh, that league table, aren't you? It's, it's naturally going to happen. I mean, uh, your next couple of games to end 2023, a huge Leeds United at home, Sheffield Wednesday at home. What are you thinking about them games, Aaron? Well, Leeds United are winning. I think it's 4 0. It's 4 0 last know. time I checked against Ipswich Town at the time of recording this year. Yeah, they're winning 4 0 against four nil. Ipswich Town. So I'm really confident on Boxing Day. I may go lose by this time 6 1. 
I mean, it's great for our channel to get some some views from the Leeds fans, isn't it? Fantastic for it ends up being six oh. one, but it's just from the Preston North End point of view, it's just so poor. Uh, and you were just saying to me off camera before we went live here. Um, I said, "Are you Ryan Low in? Are you Ryan Low out? What are your thoughts?" And you said, "You want to you want to give your answer after the match against Sheffield Wednesday at home." Sheffield Wednesday, I think. Is I think one yeah, yeah, because I don't think you're going to be the alone in thinking that we all know you're not going to take anything at Deepdale off Leeds United with how they're playing and how you're playing. It's very much going to be a case that. Y- you're expecting Leeds United to walk walk the park, really. It's going to be very simple and straightforward. So anything, uh, you pick up anything at Deepdale, it's going to be a very good result as far as I'm concerned. But if you do end up losing that game, I don't think it should be the do-all and end-all of somebody's tenor in charge of your club. But Sheffield Wednesday at home, I think, is a completely uh, different story, don't you think? I still agree with that, Scott, especially because if we do fail to beat Leeds and Sheffield Wednesday, that's three wins in 18, and that's a sackable offence at any club in the Championship, no matter who you yeah. are. It's very, very hard to defend three wins in 18. That's I mean, three wins in 16. I could argue a case. I could sit here right now and say Ryan Lowe shouldn't yeah. be in charge against Leeds United. Um, again, conceding an added time against Swansea City just last night, didn't you? Um, another yeah. poor result. Uh, just looking at the league table here, Preston North End currently sitting in ninth. Um, all That's these teams nice. right down to uh, Middlesbrough Who are going to fancy today. that. Yeah, and, and it, I mean, it's big volume to me that I look at the goal difference of all the teams that are around here. Nobody's below zero. Watford are on plus eight. You're on minus 11. <laughs> Which means when you win, you win very narrowly. And when you lose, you lose. <laughs> Minus 11. Who's got a worse goal difference? You've got to go all the way down to 21st. Yeah. Queen's Park Rangers have nearly got a better goal difference. In fact, Queen's Park Rangers could have a better goal difference by the end of today. And they're in the relegation zone. <laughs> That's where the form of Preston North End is. And oh, um, I mean, how many points are you on? 32. Are you, 32. Are you, are you pessimistic? Are you just saying to yourself, six more wins? We're safe in the championship again, and we and we go again next season because the start that you got off to and the money that's been Fantastic, spent yeah. in the summer, shouldn't you be looking for a little bit more? And the optimism that was feeling throughout August and September, you were selling out away ends. The demand for tickets were through the roof. There was a proper feel good factor at Preston North End, and you've just not built on that, have you? No, because but if you look back at the wins when you take the blue rose of tinted glasses off the Preston fans we weren't playing well in our wins but we were finding a way to win these games but even then we kept conceding winning 2-1 like that because it's very rare they clean sheets so I don't think we've kept one at Deepdale uh, let me just uh, let's get the let's get the uh, results uh, back up that you've had let's have right with that. I don't think we've kept uh, a clean sheet all season let's have a look so uh, let's have a look. Uh, clean sheet against Norwich. Um, have you won and kept a clean sheet this season? Um, uh, good point. Yes, uh, Stoke. Yeah, yeah, Swan Stoke away, uh, 2nd of September. It's Christmas. <laughs> You're not won and kept a clean sheet since the beginning of September. There's a couple of clean sheets Wednesday, in there. Yeah. So three clean sheets all season. You pay played twenty three games. And you and get three clean, clean sheets. sheets all season. Wow, uh, which isn't good. Isn't good, right? I mean, I want I want your thoughts on these Ryan Lowe comments. Um, so wow. he said, was it in response to your? Uh, was it your last match that you played um, before the Swansea game, which was Watford um, yeah. home match where you lost five one? You were completely out played in that game um and if you took the lead didn't you as well they played well first up actually for once but then second and then half watford put their opportunities bit. away and just uh, yeah completely yeah. just collapsed so i want your thoughts so ryan lowe said and i'm not going to use direct quotes here but he's inferred that the president he's get he's coming under scrutiny he's getting criticized mm-hmm. and people are calling into question that there's no plan b uh he seems a little bit clueless in charge at the club and Ryan Lowe in response to these criticisms that have come in from fans has said that he's uh, the fans aren't qualified. They've not got their coaching badges. They're not qualified 
to make the comment about the club and about his management of the football team, which, as you were saying earlier, and I fully agree with what you said, where you start criticising the fans, that is the end, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. There is no going back. You can't take them feelings away. Now, I would like... I mean, um, this is where you guys haven't... Go on, Aaron. This, uh, as a manager, this is where he needs to show his emotional intelligence, especially when you're having an interview like to think before you speak. When you're feeling you the emotions are high like that. It's going to say, like, from players under the bus, like blaming Ali McCann, throwing him under the bus, you no, know, for the Swansea winner like that. I don't like that style it of takes, management. It takes the morale away. It leads yeah. to the players it's being unhappy. And it, you will face a case January transfer window just round the corner. If it doesn't improve the morale over the next couple of games, some of these players that you've got will ask to leave the club. And you face a decision then. Does the board decide to back the players or does yeah. the board decide to back the manager? But the important part here is he criticises the player. don't think he should be doing that, but he has. It's another to then go on and criticise the supporters following the club through thick and thin. The yep. supporters were here before Ryan Lowe were here. The supporters will still be here once well, Ryan Lowe is no longer here. So, surely as a football manager, you, you have to understand that it's a, an emotional game. It's, it's a passionate game. You're going to have clashes. You're going to uh, say things that you say in the heat of the moment. Yeah. But I'm yet to hear any accountability. Uh, we wasn't at Swansea away um, on Friday night, so I don't know how true it is, but uh, I've, I've been just having a look on your social media and uh, a lot of people have been saying that did go to the game that Ryan Lowe didn't bother to thank the fans for coming and travelling, what was it, like four, 500-mile round trip to Swansea on Mad Friday of all the Fridays, where Preston North End and Swansea chose to move that game to have an extra day's rest, that you've lost away at Swansea, and now you're facing a, an informed Leeds United, a scary-looking Leeds United uh, on Boxing Day. What's the point in moving that game to the Friday? There's just... Things just aren't quite adding up. And what was such a positive start to the season, uh, it's all just kind of collapsing yeah. upon itself. So I want to ask you, a Preston North End supporter, what do you think the club should do right now? They've got to show emotion here into the club like that. As a, what I think they'll do, I think they'll try and give a vote of confidence to Ryan Lowe to try and show a bit of unity. But I think behind the scenes, I think privately, they'll be looking at other options like that. So they will be more in this situation over the Crimbo period. So if things go south and you don't pick up a win against Leeds United or Sheffield Wednesday, do you think Ryan Lowe should leave? Yeah. Who would you bring in? Who would you like to see? If we needed a short-term appointment, the one thing I wouldn't mind seeing, just a steady ship if we needed it, Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock just... Uh, Give you that. Short term appointment if we need him to end the season like that. I know it's not a it's not a sexy a appointment, but he knows the business, he gets the <laughs> job done. <laughs> Another emotional man loves loves a bit of controversy, loves to give safe thoughts and say uh, how it is, doesn't he? If you're looking long for the managers out there, it always oh, can. Oh, 100%, 100%. If you need yeah. a man to come in and steady that ship, Neil Warnock will come in and he'll steady that ship. It's what Neil Warnock does. He does yeah. it very well. He's a very good manager. No question in that. Uh, he'll, he'll demand respect from the players. Um, so it'd be, it'd be very interesting. But if you're not looking for that short-term option, you're looking more towards long-term. Because obviously Ryan Lowe, uh, is he in the top 10 longest-serving managers now in the championship, I think? Uh, um I think. Is he top two now? Top two. I know he was, yeah, he, he was gathering top towards two. like the top uh, top six, top two. So he, he served he time. Show it, so it? Oh yeah, championship. Crazy club, championship. Yeah, two managers. years. Yeah, that's the life cycle yeah. of a manager, and he's number two after two years. It's ridiculous. That's, it is crazy. Um, has has much progress been shown by Preston North End? Is he any better? That's than Alex what Neal? I'll judge him on. Like Ryan, right, last season we had more points on the board, and this time we've spent more money and we're lower. And yeah. less points. Very interesting parts to the season. This very interesting. His next couple of games are huge. I, I'd be very surprised if Preston North End did anything about Ryan Lowe 
right now with how short the turnover is between the games. Yeah. Uh, you, you'd want somebody who's already tried and tested, who's already here, uh, knows the systems and stuff, because uh, you, you can decide from from the next couple of games. Do you do you do you push on from there with him, or do you do you choose to uh, pursue with somebody else? Because I'm just having a look at your fixtures here. So obviously you've got Leeds United and uh, Sheffield uh, Wednesday coming up, and then looking further beyond that, I mean you've got Sunderland away on uh, on, on New Year's Day. Uh, let me just uh, get better, show you guys. No, not really. No, um, let me just uh, get Good it job, up to Sheffield Wednesday the game is that's our next three leads. Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland, tough game. I mean, you don't really get. I mean, that's a, I could call out the Championship big three, really. Uh, so you got a couple of games: Boxing Day, Leeds United here, half twelve kickoff. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday coming up on the 29th, Another short turnover, and then Sunderland away. Um, yeah. And then you, you judge from there. I mean, you've got a bit of a free hit Chelsea away in the FA Cup. Nobody's expecting you to go to uh, Stamford Bridge and, and win, but I do expect you to go to Stamford Bridge and at least fight. Have the pot, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you're laughing. You need the confidence and morale is to be smacked 5 6 nil by a, yeah. uh, a rotated second 11 by Chelsea. So that's a disappointing thing with Ryan Lowe, like under his tenure. We don't really have a style of play it's just who's bought them in and it's got worse throughout this season very well very we're not very good at it we're not in. very good at who's ball like sitting back and soaking pressure didn't he promise um a, a good style of play yeah but i'm not gonna um, hang out to Ryan, but i think he's an exciting one like that's gonna say is why you're expecting it to turn out completely different i mean i, I never had out out first couple. season like that under north end his season was Absolutely brilliant to watch, especially with the first yeah. half of that first season. Then it went towards the yeah, went sour, went sour like that. It's a negative football. I mean, I remember uh watching a couple of Berry Football Club games before they had all the financial problems and yeah. uh, obviously got expelled out of the football league under under Ryan Lowe when they were playing in League Two, and they played a very uh, attractive style of football. Um, my father-in-law, Dale, sometimes hops along with us to some of the games. He doesn't like being on camera, but he's given his thoughts on, on Ryan Lowe. Uh, and he loves Ryan Lowe. And, th and that feeling, I feel like, at Berry Football Club is, is very much there with Ryan Lowe. He's highly rated, but it, there's a huge difference between walking the walk in League Two and then coming Especially to the Championship when you've got and asking a club to get to the point. Premier League. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult to do. Uh, there were people that were calling into question about Plymouth Argyle when he went because uh, he followed from Berry yeah. Football Club down to Plymouth, uh, did well with Plymouth, and then oh, managed to get it. a job at, uh, at Preston North End, didn't he? Yeah. Yet it's Schumacher down at Plymouth that people call the brain, the man that's uh, that, that was power in that push it, yeah. for, for, for Plymouth, yeah. Uh, and they seem to be going from from uh, from strength to strength and looking to try and solidify themselves as a, as a championship club, which I think if they manage to comfortably stay up this season is a, a big success for, for yeah. Plymouth. Uh, um, but as you said, Preston North End of, as well. Yeah. So it's Preston North End have, have pushed and pushed. I mean, you've been in the championship now since you were promoted back in 2015. Yeah. So, it's so we're looking season. at, yeah. So it's, it's, you've done eight seasons. It's your ninth season in the championship uh, in and that no time. Not, not one, no. not one. Is it enough to just say, oh, we're just going to keep staying up, try and get in the playoffs, but never get into the playoffs? At, at what point do you, yeah. does something give? At what point it's does something impressive. give? These are the interesting questions. It's quite impressive, Ben. It's like, <laughs> we must be a very boring club to support as an outsider. Like that. We're not very exciting. We've not had a lot of success since 1961. That's the last time we was in the top tier. And I think, I think the big danger that you've got um not it's not Preston North End's fault geographically where you're located, but yeah. if you're somebody that is based in Preston who wants to follow their hometown club through thick and thin like you do, then on your doorstep, if you're not enjoying the style of play and you're not enjoying mm. watching the team, on your doorstep you've got some of the biggest clubs in world football that people can go and watch exciting football, they can go and watch exciting projects. Liverpool, Everton, City, United, 
all on the doorstep. So for Preston North End, if they want to appeal to the masses and get the whole city behind them again, then at the end of the day, you need to offer something to them fans and certainly not criticising them isn't the way to go about it. Because I think if I was working on the board at Preston North End, I would be seething at what Ryan Lowe said. I couldn't think yeah. of anything more worse for business than what Ryan Lowe said. It's close to being a sellout I against agree. Leeds United. I think there's like 600 seats left. 600 seats. Now. 150. It's, it's, so it's dipping down. It's dipping. So it's a big deal and it's a big game. Massive game for Preston North End on, on Boxing Day. You've got to ask yourself, it's Boxing Day football, it's tradition. People are going to turn up. Why should these fans then turn up against Sheffield yeah. Wednesday? Why should that these reason, fans then turn up know. against Bristol City at home in January? You need to get them to come back. You need to get them to enjoy what they're yeah. watching. And at the end of the day, football is a result-driven business. It doesn't matter how you play your football as long as you win your games, which is what was happening at the beginning of the season. Exactly. I don't think you were playing particularly well. We were. You were winning and it was getting people in. It was getting people exactly. talking. It was getting people excited. The results have stopped. The performances have continued. And that's going to dwindle off and dwindle off and dwindle off. To a point where if you end up carrying on going another, what is it, 16 games? Yeah. Uh, so your next 16 games, you win just three of them again and your form continues with the current form that you've got. Um, you're going to be, uh, after uh, 39 games, sitting on, what, less than 50 points? points. Yeah. You'll be on 41 points if you don't if you lose <laughs> 13 of them yeah, 16 and, draws, and win just three minutes. of them and you don't get any draws. <laughs> all of a sudden, you, you, you'll be right down in a relegation scrap. And from the yeah. season, that uh, how you started the season, just, so just, much. just shouldn't be happening. It yeah. shouldn't be happening. I think I agree with you, Aaron. I weren't too sure. I was sitting on the fence about should he be gone now? Them comments that he made after Watford, I would have sacked him for. But they've chosen not to do that. They've pursued with him for Swansea away. And I think now with how short the turnover is, next couple of games are huge. You're probably yeah. going to stick with him for New Year's Day as well, uh, just with how short the turnover is between Sheffield Wednesday and the Sunderland game. But certainly after that, I think your next three games, lose all three. I think you lose your next two, he should be gone. You don't win yep. your next three, I think he should be gone, is my yep. thoughts. There'll be some out there who will say they want him gone now in time for Leeds. But you just feel it like that, ball. especially especially if we go behind and start losing. You can feel that negativity, the toxic atmospheres that get worse, especially in yep. front of a sellout crowd near enough at Deep Bell as well. If you watch a Leeds fans Huge. and join every second of it. Huge, absolutely huge. It'll get very poisonous very quickly. I imagine there will be some Leeds United fans in the home end as well. Yeah, there'll be a few. They're a very, very passionate bunch. They'll be celebrating as well. So things could get very toxic very quickly. Quickly, yep. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that game. That should be a good game of football. So uh, we'll be back with uh, another match vlog for that for you guys yep. to enjoy. I want to thank Mick Sid for coming on for another episode of Chat Shit Get Paid. We'll be back <laughs> again real soon. Okay. Um, perhaps when Ryan Lowe gets out and I'm going to sit here and ask another question of, uh, let's have a look at which managers you may <laughs> want to bring in. Uh, we would love to know your thoughts in the comments, though. Uh, Ryan Lowe, I what would. should happen with Preston North End? Uh, get it in the comments below. As I said, do you think he should be gone right now? If so, put yes in the comments. If you think he should be given a little bit more time, put no uh, and give your reason behind that as well. Uh, we'll have some good uh, interaction for you guys. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more content to come for you guys. Do take it easy. And on behalf of JSGC Football, we want to wish everybody a very happy Christmas. Merry Christmas and yeah. we'll be back for Boxing All the Day New Year. match vlog. Oh, 100%. 100%. Guys have been uh, legendary for us uh, since we created the channel. Picked up, what, nearly 2,000 subscribers Just inside uh, the, the, the yeah. first year or so of the, of the channel. So that's much appreciated. Uh, so a big shout out to all you guys. And we will see you all again soon. Thank you everybody for watching. Take it easy. Peace. Ciao for now.